Hello and welcome to this video. So, vegans, vegan January. So this is uh, January in uh, 2021 and this month is about vegan January. So for me, I have been a vegan since uh, 2009, um, the end of 2009. So it's been, it's been over 10 years. Uh, you know, over a decade of being a vegan myself, um, being a vegetarian since two, 2007. So um, what changed me? Um, my my past story, like what happened to me? So basically, I'm, I'm quite a sensitive person uh, with energy, emotions and things. I'm very aware and being more aware so since I was very, very young about just energies, but not really harnessing or understanding. I think when one is so sensitive, then you can pick up so many different energies and things. It's, it takes longer to really discover who you are because everything's so sensitive. So what happened was that I remember many years ago um, living with parents and my mum making food, and I remember having a plate of uh, sausages and pea, um, peas and uh, mashed potato and whatever else was there. I remember like carving into the you know the meat sausage and trying to take a bite and the second bite I was just feeling full like I remember doing like this I just can't 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 eat this and there's nothing to do with the taste it was like something was going on the energy I thought I was sick so I actually um, secretly threw out the, the food it was mainly the meat I ate everything else and I thought what is going on with me why am I suddenly you know, not, not liking meat. Meat, I've never thought about not eating meat before. So I thought I was becoming sick. I didn't go to the doctor. I just thought, okay, maybe it's just making me feel sick. Um, and a lot of my life I had struggled with like emotions, I guess. Um, you know, I lost my temper a bit and got agitated. And, um, you know, I was never allowed like E numbers, like in like colored sweets when I was younger, because I had like, um, hyperactivity or ADHD or whatever that was like dyslexia and all sorts of things but as I grew up things became much better um, excuse me so as I got older things became much better that way and it wasn't until I ate me again uh, in 2007 that I started like, I remember being a bit more like angry and not, not really angry straight away, but just a bit more emotional. And I noticed that every time I had a break from eating meat, then I had meat, I noticed how I was absorbing some sort of pain or aggression. And I wonder where this was coming from. Then I thought about energy and I thought about well, where, you know, where's this energy coming from? This, this emotion, emotional energy. And it was most likely from the animals. Probably sounds crazy, but you know, energy it gets stored in cells, and then you know, as we know, the way animals are treated, then they are butchered and and tortured during the whole raising up and treated badly in cages and depressed and missing their mothers and all these other different things. So um, I gave up meat and I became a vegetarian and kept eating cheese and milk, which was fine for a bit, and then I decided give that up because I knew about the health benefits of of um, not eating dairy or milk um, you know being inflamed and everything uh, and mucus in the body and being more sick so I realized that when I did eat meat that I was taking on board the emotions of the animals and that was very interesting you know I was like okay every time I eat meat I'm feeling emotional I'm feeling agitated I'm feeling pain in my body you know I don't want to be eating pain so throughout the over 10 years, the, over a decade of being a vegan, I have slipped up a few times and ate things accidentally, um, which I haven't realized. And I've been okay, but I've noticed that in my body, I felt quite heavy, lethargic, tired, um, not depressed or, or feeling the emotions so much, but, but also the smell has changed. Like, yes, I've been a vegan for, you know, many, many years, but there have been things in the past that I have eaten where, 
I I was rebelling and thinking, no, I'm just I'm gonna try I me. Mean, maybe maybe it was just a phase. And I had like some fish or steak, like a little bit of it, and I just it just didn't feel right. You know? So I can't say I've been a vegan for ten years because I've you know, I have intently not been a vegan, but then I've decided actually this doesn't work for me. I know that something's not right here. But then speaking to people who have been vegans for 15, 20 years, some of them have a little bit of meat, maybe once or twice a month, or a bit of like goat cheese or something, I don't know. But there are other sources of getting vitamins and minerals in your diet, you can get everything you need being vegan. So I'm not here promoting being completely a vegan, it's like you just have to follow what your, what your body needs. Every body is different. So for me, how it helped me along, you know, my health, my life, is that I went for a number of cleanses. I went for a number of cleanses um, back um, around 2011, 2012. I did a lot of salt, salt water flushes, which is drinking like two liters of salt water and doing a full body clonic, doing lots of fasting, um, lots of exercise. I really miss those, those times. Uh, and mainly in the summer, I did that a lot. Almost every weekend I did a salt water flush and I really cleansed my body and my mind and it helped me be a lot more clearer in my thoughts. So um, being vegan, how it's helped me is that it's been more creative, making dishes like foods, um, salads, um, chilies, uh, curries, um, and exploring other foods. And, and to be honest, I was a fruitarian for about two or three years, on and off. Mostly, you know, 99% fruitarian. Sometimes I slipped up and didn't have things that weren't fruit. I was trying to experience the life of being a fruitarian and just eating watermelon for a few days, um, being, on, being on Banana Island or just having lots of mangoes or having a variety of different things and then having like salads and keeping everything raw. I was a raw, raw vegan, I was a raw fruitarian and it was great. I really enjoyed it but I don't think it was forever. It clearly isn't because I've missed other foods. I've missed the warmth at, at winter time. When I, when I am in a hot climate, a warm environment, a different country, or even here in England in the summer, then I usually just have very light meals or just fruit or like salads, um, nothing usually quite heavy. The winter time usually seems to be a lot more carbs and heavier foods, spicier foods. It's always changing, but it's been a big eye opener for me um, over 10 years of being, you know, plant based. And the last couple of years, I've seen a big boom of new, you know, supermarkets um, having new aisles of foods and like uh, meat free um, vegan alternatives, which has been great. Um, vegan milks, plant based milks, been making my own milks. I've had experienced tons and tons of superfoods you name it i've tried pretty much everything um everything you know um and yeah mushrooms you know like medicinal mushrooms not magic mushrooms um superfoods um like proteins um vegan cheeses vegan milks uh, the list goes on it's such a vast thing it can be very expensive luckily in the time i was in a job which um allowed me to have the finances to explore this lifestyle. I was doing lots and lots of juicing. Like every day I was juicing and having the money to do that. So it can be quite an expensive lifestyle. But the health benefits are great. And actually, you've got to make sure it's organic. And this is what people stress about all the time, and it's true, because I was juicing lots and lots, and I was juicing lots of apples and all sorts of things. Um, and I went to look at my composter after like a couple of years of putting it in this one place and it just didn't seem to decompose the same as organic matter, like organic food, like leftovers. And I was like, wow, like this stuff is, you know, is what I'm eating, is it healthy? Am I losing nutrition, you know? So in my body, I did notice that I started feeling a bit, not weaker, but just tired more so. And I started having more like, injuries, you know, like. Like, like bones and stuff, like problems in my ribs and and everything like that. And I noticed, okay, well, I gotta start 
trying to incorporate other foods. Um, like even a vegan, you know, or vegetarian at least. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, you you know, looking at life in a way of what, what can I do? What's good for me? Did a blood test. I was fine. No issues there. Um, so it's important to like make sure you're keeping your B12 levels up, um, iron, and you can supplement with that, but you should also eat, eat in the right foods. There is lots of calcium in the right foods that you can eat that are vegan. Um, but if vegan isn't your way, just try it, do it. Not, don't just try it, but do it for a week, two weeks. Try a month in, in January, vegan January, or try another month, or try it in the summer months when you feel a bit more, I don't know, lighter eating. It's an amazing experience, it's very healthy. Um, you'll probably find that you have more energy. I've helped um, people, quite a handful of people uh, over the years, um, become more inspired to their eating lifestyle. Originally they were laughing at me and uh, you know didn't quite understand until they had health problems. There's one guy who was at a job many years ago when I used to work and um, I was from my fruitarian phase, so I had like the sticker saying like fruit power and everything. I came in one day and he put up this sign on the wall saying like steak power and I was like, okay, I know what this is about. And then uh, one day um, when everyone had left like the, the lab, the laboratory which I was working in, he, he walked in and he approached me privately and he said, hey, like, how, what, what do you eat? And I'm like, I mean, this was a guy that was always like bullying me at, at work, you know commenting me and picking on me and and then he wanted to know more and I said what are you asking me about and he says well my doctor's asked me to eat an only, an only vegetarian diet or just fruits and veg and I was like why because I've got a problem with my, my liver or kidney I can't remember which one it was and I was like oh and I was like well there's a lot to know there's food combinations food combining so not mixing heavy and light fruits and vegetables doesn't mix very well, you can have a lot of gas. Melons is the worst, you eat melons as they are, don't mix it with anything else. Um, and also having spaces in between meals, and these are the things I was telling him. And it's not easy. He slipped up many times, he tried to keep eating veg and fruit only. Um, and you know, his doctor was telling him, and I was sort of laughing in my head, like, okay, this guy's been bullying me for like, you know, like months, and now he's asking me for help. But then all the bullying went away because when it comes about health and, and an actual doctor is involved, then things change. Um, but I was not sick once, you know, at all. Like, you know, for all, all those years I have been sick a bit because of, like, I think stress can make you sick. But with it, when I didn't have the stress about things in life, uh, like work and commitments and things, um, you know, emotions, um, then... I found that, you know, the, the lifestyle of eating plant-based kept me, my immune system very much high. I didn't feel so toxic. I didn't feel so bunged up. I look at myself in the morning and see my eyes and they look so much more clearer. Um, and although I've had Indian food, like a takeaway, I found that the heaviness of the oils has made me very lethargic and tired and very heavy. So I tend not to eat like takeaways, I, I tend to like make it myself because I, I trust what I'm doing, you know, there's lots of sugar in, involved and salt and it can really inflame you and keep lots of toxins in your body. So yeah, along the way I really, one important thing I learned about being vegan and really having self-control, um, being really militant with myself of not touching anything but just fruit during that time I was like a fruitarian was that I I gained the emotional muscles of self-control of not being of having temptation and then when I did slip up in the in the past of being more relaxed and having things with a bit more sugar in then I noticed actually I don't enjoy it as much as I used to um, you know I used to eat a lot of colored sweets and sweets when I was younger and like you know, after being giving up a lot of sugar, like sugar based things like sweets and things that are bad, they're not even foods, they're just, it's just, it's not, <laughs> okay, it's, it's something you can digest and you can eat, but it's not good quality healthy food, it's just 
substance that's sugar. And I noticed how much I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't as tasty. It tastes very chemically. And I noticed that the self-control of the temptation of having a whole bar of chocolate in front of me, like a milk chocolate, I just wasn't tempted anymore. I don't feel the need to like the pool or I don't draw, you know, like, oh, saliva, you know, get saliva and like, mm, oh, I just want a bit of chocolate. I don't really get that anymore. Um, I get the, the cravings of more healthier foods of, you know, what I love making is things like pastas, quinoa, um, couscous or millet grain or it's like dark brown uh, black rice with like fried sort of tofu, tempeh, um, with vegetables, um, coconut milk or like uh, chopped tomatoes as a, like a sauce and put some chili and some vegan cheese and all these different flavors and yeah, I don't know, I just have more of a craving for things that are fresher now. Um, I would never sit down and eat like candy, you know, um, sweets as we call them in, in, in the UK, uh, you call them candy in like America. Um, but like, yeah, I've noticed how my self-control of foods and also fasting really helped with that as well, because not just being a, a vegan, but also fasting and really sustaining from food. Uh, just having water only for a week, a week and a half, just having that or some juice, nothing else, and wanting the temptation. I remember when I traveled to Bali and I was on uh, an, the islands in between um, Bali and, and Lombok, two big islands, and in between are like t three little islands. And the middle one it was called uh, Gili Mina, a beautiful island. I had a perfect place on the beach. And um, I was with a friend and we saw the sunrise and the sunset in exactly the same spot on the very front of the beach. And I was in a, in a cabin like, on my own. And I don't know, about half a, half a minute of a walk to onto the beach was this little like shack where they were making all this lovely fresh food. And I asked them, can I just have um, like 10 coconuts? And they were like, what? It's like, yeah, I'm fasting. I just want some coconuts. This is a funny, very funny story. Because I, I just wanted the coconut water. But did not, that I had a machete with me and, and a, a metal straw and a knife and a spoon. And every coconut I opened up only had coconut water. And that's what I had for about six, seven days straight. And I was on getting me now, and that's all I had. I didn't, I didn't eat anything else. And I was checking in with myself, making sure I'm okay, I was fine. It was the longest I had like fasted for, for you know, a long while. And um, yeah, and I had this temptation of this, you know, really fresh, nice food on, on the beach, and I didn't touch it. I smelled it and I was like, it's okay, I, I can wait. I wanna change myself, I'm in a great warm place. And when you fast as well, like your body goes through different temperatures and I was feeling a normal temperature. I wasn't feeling hot. I was feeling a bit cool in my body because your body is going through a cleansing, a healing. It's clearing things out. It's clearing out debris and like dead stuff. And I was doing salt water flushes. So drinking salt water and it's a whole body clonic from your front door to your, your back door, basically. It all just comes out and clean. And I just felt so light and just yeah, it was really good. I really, you know, really enjoyed that. Um, and I believe you know, every coconut I opened up just had water. There was no coconut meat, no flesh in there. It was just pure water. I think on the eighth or ninth day, um, I think it was probably the eighth day, seventh or eight, I can't remember how long it was now, over a week. Um, on the very last day, the very last coconut that I picked had no water, but just coconut meat in there which was, I think I had a little bit of water, but it was mainly very thick of coconut meat. And I was like, and all that, the whole time I was secretly being like, ha ha ha, I want a bit of that meat. And every one I opened up, it was just, there was hardly any, any flesh in there. And I was like trying to like sneakily, you know, not do that. So whoever intuitively picked those coconuts or why intuitively did that, like how, the universe somehow knew that those coconuts were for me, which is very funny. 
Um, so yeah, along the way of being, you know, vegan and cleansers, I learned self-control of foods and sustaining myself. But I have to be prepared for it if I want to um, not have those foods for much longer. So um, yeah, after after the week, uh, after eight days or however long it was, I can't remember how long. Over a week of not having any um, any any food, just coconut water and water for you know over a week. I indulged myself in some lovely Balinese food on the beach and I stayed another week there just living in a shack and just having three meals a day and it was just beautiful and really enjoying it and it, first of all it was very strange to eat food it was like okay this is this is food now um, but it was all vegan very very beautiful and you can make some amazing dishes being vegan um, again I think that if I continued eating meat and cheese and dairy um, a lot then I I don't know maybe I would have not been so healthy now might become more sick um, like less energy I feel like now like being vegan I have the energy to do the things that I want to do I don't often feel tired I feel I have laser like focus um, my thoughts are clear I don't feel like angry um, yeah, I just feel like the, you know, the, the vegan way works for me. It doesn't, why not work for everybody? But for me, at the moment, right now, it, it works and I feel okay. So like, vegan annuary, it's, this is a month of really challenging yourself to see if you can do the same. You know, it's not just about sitting down eating, eating salads. Use this time if you are in lockdown to to research about meals, get some new foods in, you know, if you can't go out, then order some stuff from a supermarket if you can, order online, deliver it to your door, and experiment new ways. Um, just really know what you're doing, it's very, very easy, there's less oils involved, there's no fats like there is with like steaks and chickens and things, so um, it's a lot healthier for you as well, you know, saturated fats and everything. Um, yeah, try things like sweet potatoes, like magic mash as I call it, which is like sweet potatoes, like butternut squash, a little bit of carrot or a celeriac, mash that up with some like, um, I don't know, small a dollop of like uh, almond milk with um, a bit of vegan butter, mash it up with a bit of salt and pepper and it's, it's really nice, you know, make a really good meal. Um, just be creative. There are many, many dishes out there, many different recipes. Me, I make them up myself. I think once you learn how to like fry something, like cook something, boil it up, then you can put anything with anything, as long as you know about food combinations. And that's making sure that you're not mixing sour and sweet together. Um, you can put like raisins in for a curry, but you know, you shouldn't eat straight after you've eaten a, a main meal like something sweet because of food digestion um, and this doesn't matter if you're vegan or not I just find that I've witnessed as well that people who uh, you know mix so many foods have things like bloating have sluggish problems within themselves and the biggest downfall is wheat is bread and I've noticed that in many many people uh, and, and more so women actually um, been a lot of women in my life who who I've known who have wheat intolerances I don't know why that will be um, there have been some men um, but for me I can't eat white bread I know it bloats me it makes me feel blocked it's almost like I've ate play-doh and the the fluffy white bread has turned into this like this brick and I'm trying to digest it and I feel tired I feel sluggish I feel horrible so now I only eat rye and spelt bread um, with very little wheat in there. It's a different, different type of grain. Uh, rye bread on its own is just very flat, very very dense. And a really good tip, if you want to know the, the most healthier breads, then get the most healthier breads that are very dense and very hard and very dark. Uh, if you get breads that are very fluffy and white, they're not so good for you. It's actually the fluffier and lighter breads that are very doughy and sticky and can you know be very bad for us bloating um, gas uh, bad digestion putting on weight but if you eat breads uh, like grains that are very dense very dark very like rich looking then they are much healthier for us so i'm going to enjoy the next number of years you know having a plant-based diet 
as best as possible, which I have been. Um, I make everything myself and it's been a great opportunity to meet like-minded people. Um, I did start a, a vegan group in Bridgewater in my hometown and it was lovely, um, but then the pandemic happened and we couldn't meet. But I found that some of them weren't so into spiritual matters. So when I was talking about spirituality, it didn't quite, sometimes people didn't quite mix. Um, so as much as I wanted the, the plant-based society and people, it was attracting people who had different ways of, of thinking. And that's the thing, is like when you eat, you know, you're, you're eating clean, but you have to also keep your, your mind clean as well. It's not just about your body, you know, you can, you can be the most healthiest body out there, but if your mind isn't healthy, then you're unbalanced, you know, you're unbalancing yourself emotionally, physically, um, and physical problems can manifest through emotions. But most of all, if you look after yourself physically and eat a clean diet, and I'm not telling you to go vegan, I'm not promoting, hey, go vegan, it's best for the world. Yes, it does help. It helps keep the cost down of animals being slaughtered. We have a lot more plant life to, to, to you know, be at our resources, and we can grow plants much faster than animals. Um, plants are much better for us. We are biologically more suited for eating plants because of our digestion. If you look, if you don't know this, look at the difference between um, the characteristics of a of um, an animal that eats meat compared other than like an animal that eats plants, you know. So you'll find that uh, meat eaters like dogs, for example, you know, our, our, our pets, if they eat meat, it, it goes out of them within the next, you know, number of hours or well, very fast. They have a, a very much more higher acidic uh, stomach content. They have a shorter digestive tract. They have pointier, sharper teeth. Um, that the smell is much different, um, their pee is much different, more, more acidic. Then you look at plant base eaters, which are, have much more longer digestive system, um, not sharp teeth. Um, you know, we're not equipped to catch an animal, you know. So it's like we look at ourselves biologically, and the reason why people eat meat is because it's not raw. We don't, humans don't eat meat raw, we have it cooked when it's, it's dead, it's like, it's then. It, it's dead food in a way, dead, dead energy that then that person can absorb and then eat. And then, you know, people put on flavors and spices and stuff to make it like taste better. Um, and another thing you didn't probably know is that a lot of meats in supermarkets, um, companies put deodorant or, or things on there to stop it smelling, which I've heard. I'm not sure that's true, but it's what I've heard. So there's lots of things like health, which isn't really good for for, for humanity, you know, um, being vegan, I'm not saying is the way, but it definitely helps. And if you can live your life in such a way that you're eating 75 or 80% of your foods vegan, then you're doing a good thing for yourself, and not just for the world. If you're still missing meat and you want dairy or meat, feel free to, but just make sure you're not eating it all the time. That's the best thing that you can try to do, but challenge yourself a month being vegan and see how you feel, see how much energy you have and see if you're really being really, you know, happy with yourself. <laughs> so I hope that's helped. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I can't really give you any links of, of people to, uh, to research my recipes and stuff, but there are tons and tons of people out there, lots of YouTubers, lots of books out there. But most important, do eat the things that you love. Don't just stick to one thing, have a variety. Remember to have like a rainbow diet and uh, drink plenty of water, keep clean, get enough rest and don't stress and live your life in such a way you do not need a holiday. So thank you for watching. I hope to speak to you soon. Have a great day.